who's ready for a hypnosis show? <laughs> All right, now by show of hands, actually, you know what? Make some noise if you have seen a live hypnosis show before. No junkies. <laughs> you all know how much fun we are about to have here tonight. And make some noise if this is your very first live hypnosis show. <laughs> Alright. Well, welcome in, my hypno virgins. <laughs> there was that hesitation of, ah, oh, okay, that's hilarious. <laughs> it's weird, I know, but roll with it. I, you are about to find how much fun. But to find out how much fun we are going to have here tonight. Now, I know I was chatting with a bunch of you beforehand at dinner. And a lot of you mentioned that uh, you might be open to being hypnotized. How many of you, by show of hands, think you want to be hypnotized here tonight? All right, all right. Well, like I mentioned to a lot of you, I'm going to do things a little bit differently here tonight. Normally... A lot of hypnotists, what they'll do is they'll invite volunteers up to the stage and they'll hypnotize whoever comes up to the stage. But I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do, in fact, is I'm going to hypnotize the entire audience at once. And that way, anybody, anybody who wants to experience hypnosis will. Now, if you do not want to be hypnotized, that's totally okay. It's not mind control. You're not going to be hypnotized in the audience if you don't want to. Somebody mentioned earlier to me, like, so is this like a mass hypnosis type thing? I said, don't make it sound like a cult. <laughs> That's not the way it works. Hypnosis is a voluntary state. And what that means is that if you want to be hypnotized, you simply got to follow the instructions and listen to what I'm saying. And the more open you are to doing it, the better it'll work. I gave this as an example to somebody as well, sort of like if you're trying to fall asleep at night. Hypnosis is not sleep, even though I'll use the word sleep to help simulate an experience of relaxation similar to sleep, you're never going to be asleep at all. However, if you go to sleep and you try to think, I need to fall asleep, 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 it's a lot harder to fall asleep when you do that. Now if you do that when being hypnotized, I gotta be hypnotized, it gotta be working, I gotta, okay, now how do I make it work? Then you're going to make it harder for yourself to be hypnotized. So in the same way where it's easier for you to fall asleep, instead of you making yourself try to sleep, if you allow yourself to sleep, same thing with hypnosis. Instead of trying to make yourself be hypnotized, if you allow yourself to be open to the experience, you will be hypnotized here tonight. Now, if you want to be hypnotized, two important things. One, I know there's a bunch of snacks that they gave you all beginning coming in, but if you want to be hypnotized, it's important you don't have any food or gum or anything in your mouth during being hypnotized, because if you get really relaxed and your neck muscles go relaxed and you have some popcorn in your mouth, <laughs> that's a different kind of hypnosis that we don't want during the show. <laughs> the second thing is if you want to get hypnotized, make sure your phone is on silent mode. No beep spells or whistles, not even vibrate, because if you're trying to be hypnotized and your friend texts you in the middle of being hypnotized saying, hey, is it working? <laughs> it was you idiot until you interrupted me. <laughs> so make sure your phone is on silent so you don't have any distractions for the process. Now, if you don't want to be hypnotized, again, totally cool. Just sit back and chill for the next couple minutes while I help the people who do have this experience. If you don't, though, please be a good neighbor to those of your friends that are experiencing hypnosis. Don't do one of the... <laughs> Don't distract your friends from trying to be hypnotized. And in fact, if somebody near you gets so relaxed that maybe they slouch over into your space, be a good neighbor, lend your shoulder as a pillow. There we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, hot shot. There we go. And now, the most important thing is if you don't want to be hypnotized, just let the people near you have their experience, have their space. The more quiet you are and less noise there is during that process, the more people can focus and concentrate. All right? Now, if you would like to be hypnotized, here's what I'll have you do. Sit up straight and tall in your chair, feet flat on the ground for me, if you will. And what I want to have you do is focus right on me. Part of hypnosis is about focus. So what I'll have you do, in fact, is I want you to pick a spot behind me. It can be one of these posters. It can be one of the chairs. Pick a spot behind me and focus on that spot. That has now become your spot. And as you stare at that spot with your eyes, your mind can be in a focus more on the sound of my voice. 
Because hypnosis is about focus, and the more that you can focus with your eyes on that spot as your ears focus on the music, your mind is beginning to focus on my voice. Allow yourself to take a deep breath in and let it out. Focusing more so as you take another breath in and breathe out. Continuing to focus and concentrate on that spot. Any laughter you hear won't distract you. It'll only serve to help you continue to focus and concentrate on that spot in my voice even more. In a moment, I'm going to have you take a third breath in. This time, when you do, when you breathe out, I simply want you to close your eyes for the sake of focusing even more as you take that third breath in now. And let it out. Closing your eyes now. That's right. Allowing yourself to focus completely on the sound of my voice. Because the more your mind can focus on my voice without any visual distractions, the more it can concentrate on this amazing feeling of relaxation. In fact, right now I want you to simply tense your entire body. Get your entire body full of tension right now, completely tense. And I'm going to count down from three to one, and when I reach number one, I want you to instantly release that tension, allowing your body to go as relaxed as it possibly can. Completely tense right now, but getting ready, preparing. Completely release that tension. Three, two, one. Allowing your entire body to get completely relaxed as you focus totally on the sound of my voice, letting every muscle, every nerve, every single fiber become more relaxed and focused on the sound of my voice. Now in a moment I'm going to count down from 5 to 1. In fact, every number I count down from 5 to 1 will help you go even deeper relaxed to focus even more on this incredible feeling of concentration and relaxation. I want you to imagine you're standing on top of a staircase in your mind, and every number I count down from five to one, you imagine taking a step down that staircase, signifying to yourself in your mind how much deeper you're going in this incredible state of relaxation and focus. Starting with number five. That's right. Noticing how good it feels to be this relaxed as you let every muscle, the nerve, the fiber from the top of your head down to the tip of your toes get completely and totally relaxed into number four. Focus right on the middle of my hand. Let yourself take one more deep breath in. And as you breathe out, you can let yourself sleep. Going all the way back down that amazing state of relaxation. Focus. That's right. Every muscle, every nerve, every fiber going all the way back down. Now I want you to 
I want to continue to show you how you can use your mind in this new and different way here tonight. Go ahead and let yourself one, two, three, awake. Sitting up straight and tall, doing great, eyes open. What I want to have you do is take your two hands and bring them together for me. Bring them up so they are about eye level and interlock all your fingers, including your thumbs. Take a spot on those hands and focus on those hands. And as you focus on those hands, I want you to squeeze those hands tightly together. Squeeze them tightly together. And imagine those hands have suddenly become the strongest clamp in the world. And the more that you clamp and squeeze them tighter together, the more locked tightly they come together. And you'll find that the more you squeeze them, the more you focus on them, the more stuck you'll find they come together. And you'll notice the more you squeeze them, the more they come together. The more you might want to try to pull them apart, the more you notice they just come closer and closer together. You could even test this out now and see that as you try to pull them apart, they just come closer and closer together, locking tighter and tighter. The more you try, the more locked they get, tighter and tighter together. That's right. The more you try, the more tighter they get locked together. You can stop trying to pull those hands apart, but continue to focus, continue to concentrate on those hands. In a moment, I'm going to count it from one to three. When I reach number three, those hands will come apart easily, and you can allow yourself to go right back down that incredible state of relaxation. Focus as you one, two, three, and sleep all the way back down. That's right. Those hands will come apart easily, and you can let yourself go even deeper. Focus more on the sound of my voice. Now, I want to continue to teach you and show you how you can use your mind in this new and different way up here tonight. The next time that you open your eyes, you will find that you cannot remember your own first name. The more you try to remember that name, the more you find you completely forget your own first name. The more you try to say it, the more you completely forget your own first name. When you say it, it just gets stuck on the tip of your tongue. The more you remember, the more you forget. You forget your own first name the next time you open your eyes. One, two, three, awake. Sitting up straight and tall, doing awesome. All right, now, I know that uh, you guys have been doing orientation for a little bit, gotten a chance to get to know each other, but I'm sure there's still some people you don't know, so just take a quick moment, introduce yourself to somebody around you, make a new friend, and we will finish out the show. I know sometimes sometimes it can be a little bit challenging. Raise your hand if right now you're having a little bit of trouble introducing yourself. I know we have some over here, over here. In fact, stand up for me. Stand up for me if you're having a hard time remembering your own name. And if if that is you, come stand in the front of the stage for me. Back. You alright? Alright. You alright? Have you ever done a business before? No, and your name is. Alright, here. That's alright. Here, we can give it back to you. Your name is? Ah, there we go. So what? as quickly as we can give it back, we can take it away. And now it's gone again. Your name is? <laughs> Alright, here. What I'll have you do is, here, I'll take your name. I'll give, can you hold her name? Can you just toss it back? Ready? Yes. Your name is? There we go. Alright, I just wanted to make sure. And uh, we'll go all the way down here. My friend, your name is? Your middle name is? <laughs> the plot thickens. Alright, well your last, your last name is? But your first name is? Alright, well, uh, actually, can I borrow this? Thank you. This is a nice pretty heart. It says live with heart, right? See, what you'll find is when you're holding this sign, you do remember your name, but when you're not holding it, you forget. Watch, if I give you the sign, your name is? Manny. <laughs> <laughs> but watch, Manny, as soon as you hand me back the sign, your name is? Manny. <laughs> <laughs> but watch, if I take back the sign, 
I'm sorry, Mandy, your name was... I'm sorry, Mandy, your name is... Ah, there we go. All right, fantastic. Here you go. Thank you for the time. Oh, and by the way, it was... <laughs> Never mind. Your name is... I had it. I had it back there. Did, right? <laughs> Did I have it? Are you wearing a name tag? Yeah. What's your name tag said? Kita. Is that your name? I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think I... I'm stressed. <laughs> That's all right. Watch. You can now remember your name, but now you can't read your name tag. Your name is... people for the chairs. Everybody can grab a seat on stage for me, actually. But we haven't even begun. Just do it. All right. All right. And we'll just move this one a little off to the side. This is the, the haunted seat. We don't want anybody to sit in the haunted seat. All right. Everybody focusing right here for me. What I'll have you do is sit back in your chair. I want you to lean this way. And lean the other way. And lean back this way. And sleep. Staying in your seat. Staying in your seat. Always staying safe, but staying in your seat, relaxing even deeper and even further. In a moment, I'm going to touch you on the shoulder, and when I do, you'll go ten times deeper and more relaxed. Always staying safe and in your seat, but when I touch you on the shoulder, you go even deeper. Now, that's right. Letting yourself stay safe and in your seat, but going even deeper every time I tap you on the shoulder. That's right, all the way down. The next time that you open your eyes, the next time that you open your eyes, any time that I say the word hypnosis, whenever you hear me say that word, that is the funniest word you have heard in your life. The funniest thing you have ever heard makes you laugh up hysterically anytime I say that word. One, two, three, awake. Sitting up straight and tall. All right, everybody doing great. Having fun. All right. Now, I know that this is the first time the hypnosis show for a lot of you. And they're having fun. It sounds like they're having fun in hypnosis. They're really enjoying the experience of learning how they can, they can use their mind to... Hypnosis is a lot of fun, isn't it? <laughs> now, this is the point of the show where a lot of you say, hmm, how do we know they're not faking? Laughter is hard to fake in hypnosis, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Hey, everybody, focus right up here. That word is no longer funny now. <laughs> but watch, anytime you're looking at the front side of me, just like you're doing, super serious, and nothing can make you laugh whenever you're looking at the front side, but whenever you're looking at the back side, that is the funniest thing you've ever seen in your life. See, because it's all about focus, and what you focus on, it actually creates a sense of a different experience. However, the moment that I give them something new to focus on, they have a different experience. But all it takes is I give them the other experience, I'll better focus, and they have the other experience. But literally, just like a light switch, when you change what you focus, you change your experience. Everybody's sitting up straight and tall in your chairs, Doing great. Deep breath in. Breathe out. Sleep. All the way down. That's right. Even deeper. Focus on the sound of my voice. That's right. Every muscle nerve fiber. Next time you open your eyes, that word is no longer hilarious or funny. Back to being an ordinary word in the front or back of me. Same thing. Completely ordinary. However, next time you open your eyes, we have a special opportunity to be part of a brand new game show here on the stage. And the winner of this game show actually walks away with $1 million. You have a chance to potentially win a whole lot of money up here on stage tonight. You get a chance to win some money on stage. One, two, three, awake. Sitting up straight and tall, doing fantastic. How many of you want to win the money? 
Oh, oh hands go right up. If you were to win one million dollars, what would you do with it? Buy a BMW. A BMW? That is a great idea. A million dollars, what would you do? Tuition. <laughs> you will. You will. But I don't know. Once you spend it on tuition, then what are you going to do with the rest? Grad school. More <laughs> tuition! <laughs> Once grad school is done, then what? Open up my own clinic. for me. <laughs> right away, right up. So the name of this game is called Statue, and how this game show works is there will be three rounds. Each round I will count down and say three, two, one, statue. And when I do your job is simply to make the best statue you possibly can. And now three things the judges are looking for to determine who wins the money is one, something original they've never seen before. Two, something creative that taps into who you are. And three, the make or break for any good statue is always the facial expression. There'll be three rounds, and the winner after three rounds walks away with a million dollars. Who's ready to play? Yeah, all right. Make sure you have a little bit of room between the person next to you. You can feel free to use all of, all of the stage here, but make sure you stay on the stage. As you get ready now to three, two, one, and statue. All right, there is quite a bit of balance going on in this one. This statue is called... Flying Eagle. <laughs> the Flying Eagle, and this statue is called... Kissy Face. The Kissy Face. This one is... Sexy Man. <laughs> sexy Man, and this one? Ballerina. The Ballerina, and this statue is called... Asian Taurus. <laughs> Asian Taurus, and this one is called... Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty with the wallet. Give it up for all of our awesome statues. Amazing round one, but we still have two more rounds to go. Here we go. Even bigger, even better. Getting ready now as you three, two, one, and statue. <laughs> oh my goodness. This statue is called the YMCA. The YMCA, and this one is the white boy that thinks they're black. Oh. The white boy that thinks they are black. Alright, and this statue is called that diva, this one is? Diva on steroids. Oh, snap. And this one's called? Stana. <laughs> Stana. And this one is? The cork. The cork. <laughs> Give it up for round two of all of our statues. Do <laughs> wait, stand it back up. Take it out, here we go. Round three, the biggest and best statue of all. This could be the make or break to determine who is the winner of the whole shebang. As you get ready now, to three, Two, one, and statue! <laughs> oh my goodness. The name of this statue is? The Hypnosis. <laughs> oh, hey, and this one is called? The Underwear Model. The Underwear Model. This one is called? Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow. All the way down here, this one is called? The downward facing dog. <laughs> the downward facing dog. This one is? Dead dog. The dead dog, and this one is? I'm bored. I'm bored. Give it up for all of our fantastic statues. Oh, look at everybody who's having a seat for me. Doing amazing and fantastic. All right. Who won the money? That's what we're about to find out. Everybody sit back in your chairs for me, doing great. And now, we got to deliberate with our judges, but before we do, the audience has one more job. Now, you all know the special word that I use to help them go back into that amazing state of relaxation focus, and I'm going to count down from three to one. When I reach number one, just shout out that word, and they know exactly what to do. Ready? Three, two, one. Sleep! That's right. Even deeper, all the way down that incredible state of relaxation and focus. Every muscle, every nerve, every single fiber. The next time you open your eyes, no longer contestants on a game show. No longer winning any money. No memory of winning any money, but relaxing even deeper. However, the next time that you open your eyes, it is as if you are back to being just five years old. You think like, you act like, you talk like the way you did when you were just five years old. And we are in kindergarten class, and I am your teacher. Anytime my back is to you, you always make silly, funny faces as a teacher. But whenever 
I'm looking at you, of course, all well behaved in front of the teacher, but if my back is to you making silly funny faces, the teacher, or in class, you act like you think, like you talk, like the way you did when you were five years old. One, two, three, awake. Sitting up straight and tall, doing great. All right, my friends, doing good, having fun in class. Now I know we are a, have a well behaved class here today. What's your favorite part of class? I love sleeping. Sleeping is a good, what's your favorite part of class? Snack time, oh my gosh. They are such a wonderful group of students, so well behaved. Your favorite part of class? <laughs> your favorite part of class? Oh, sitting. It is a good part of class. What is your favorite part? Learning. Oh, learning. How many of you like coloring? She loves coloring. Guess what? It is time to color. Everybody's favorite coloring book is in front of them now. Your favorite coloring book is in front of you now. Color away your favorite coloring book. All your favorite crayons and everything in front of you now. Coloring away your favorite coloring book. Your coloring book has just doubled in size. Even bigger, oh my goodness, an even bigger coloring book. Look at the size of that thing. Even bigger, it's doubled again. Even bigger, oh my goodness, a gigantic coloring book. Look at the size of that coloring book. Wow. But you realize the person next to you is just colored in your book. Oh, hey, don't go, be nice, be nice, what's going on? Oh, look at my book. What's the matter? Aw, they colored in your book? Aw, hey, right here. Hey, now be nice, class. Hey, watch, right here, you feel amazing. You feel great. Just like that. Hey, are you okay? What's going on? Aw, did what happen? I pushed him. Did he push you? Did he push you? Aw. Here, ready? Watch. As soon as you look at me, you feel amazing. Aw, you feel good. Look at that. All right. Now I know sometimes, hey, it's all right. You guys good? Hey, watch. I'm the... Aw, it's okay. Hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? Stop. Hey, ready? Everybody right here. Everybody feels amazing. Feels great. All right, look at that. You feel good. What do you want to be when you grow up? A little bit of astronaut. Astronaut, really great. What do you want to be? President. A president. <laughs> hey, uh, I got to know, um, what is the best thing in the whole wide world? Ice cream. Ice cream. What is your favorite thing in the whole world? Pizza. Pizza. What do you want to be when you grow up? Paleontologist. Wow, that's a big word. And I always got to know, can you tell me where do babies come from? My mom and dad. <laughs> oh. Is that, is, is that where babies come from? No. Birds. Where do they come from? The, the, the birds that have the things in them and turn them down. Oh, the birds with the things, the storks, the birds? Oh. Hey, that makes sense. Hey, I know sometimes, sometimes, do you have a question? They come from the belly. <laughs> the belly. Oh. Hey. <laughs> All right. Know that. All right, class. All right. Everybody, right here. I know sometimes in class, no bad words in class. Wow. All right. I know sometimes in class the months can get confusing, but it's actually almost time for Christmas. How many of you are excited to see Santa Claus this year? Because watch. The next time that I stomp my foot on the stage, I become Santa Claus. Watch this. What do you want for Christmas? I want to play robots. I play robot tennis seat, and I will make sure you get exactly what you want. You want what? Give me a bike. A bike? Two bikes. Uh, even better. What do you want for Christmas? I want a pony. A pony? What would you like? I want Barbie. A Barbie? Hi. What do you want for Christmas? An elephant for Christmas. All right, what would you like? A pony. A pony. What do you want for Christmas? A motorcycle. A motorcycle. All right, a motorcycle. You want a basketball. A basketball. All right. Everybody right here for me. In a moment, all of you are going to get exactly what you want for Christmas. Yeah, but I actually have one more present for the audience. Here, audience, ready? Catch this. 
I have given the audience sleep dust. Sit back in your chairs for me, doing great, but in a moment the audience is going to blow the sleep dust in your faces, and when they do, just like snow, it'll wash over you, and it'll put you right back to sleep. Audience ready? Three, two, one. All the way down. Even deeper. That's right, every muscle and fiber. Now, the next time you open your eyes, you are no longer five years old, no longer in kindergarten class. I am no longer Santa Claus, your teacher. Back to normal. Everything is okay. Next time you open your eyes, you are going to see me hands, uh, holding a basketball. However, it is not a basketball. It is, in fact, the cutest puppy dog in the whole entire world. One, two, three, awake. Eyes open. Brought a little friend to, to clap. All right, well, be nice to the puppy. Be nice to the dog. All right. Everybody have a seat. Have a seat. Share. Hey, watch. That basketball is turning into a poisonous snake. It's a puppy dog again. All right, no fighting over the puppy. But now it's a snake again. Let's now turn into a snake. All right. All right, have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. Stay safe. All right, fix the chairs for me so they're all in a row. Doing good, doing good. Okay, watch, now it's back to a basketball. Everybody right here? Please. All the way back down. The next time that you open your eyes, the basketball has returned to being a basketball. However, the next time you open your eyes, anytime I stomp my foot and make this sound, I become completely invisible and you cannot see me whatsoever. If I stomp twice, I reappear and you can see me again. However, I'm completely invisible whenever I stomp my foot. One, two, three, awake. Sitting up straight and tall, doing awesome. Now, in addition to hypnosis, hypnosis is a lot of fun. Being able to hypnotize people is pretty cool. But one of the neat things I learned to do in addition is actually this. Watch. Hey, that's alright? I was right here. No. Watch. Oh, quit playing with me. Quit playing? What? Hi. Watch. I, I'm not a ghost. You can feel that I'm not a ghost, right? Am I a ghost? No. Watch. Am I a ghost? Watch. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, okay, no. This is impossible. <laughs> you right here, but Who just moved the chair? Jesus. What? <laughs> in your seats doing great. The moment I point at you, you go right to sleep. All the way down to one. Just the, just the person I'm touching. Only the person I'm touching. One, two, three, wake. Here, ready? Sit on the, the floor for me. Ready? Sleep. Sleep. All right. 
the next time that you open your eyes, I'm no longer invisible no matter whether I stop or whatever I do. However, the next time that you open your eyes, I have suddenly turned into your favorite celebrity. This person you have always wanted to meet, I have now become that person next time you open your eyes. One, two, three, awake. And shoot. All of you, oh my goodness. Hey, uh, remind everybody who I am. Guys, it's it's true. All right, I want to get a chance to meet all of you. I want to get a chance to meet all of you. <laughs> Your favorite thing about me is the song Photograph. Aww. Aww. Okay, do you mind if I sing a bit of that song? Watch, the next words you hear coming out of my mouth are that song, ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, Y, and Z. What do you think? Still got it? Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. Hey, how would you like to come to the private concert I have going on later tonight? Later tonight? It's like a super fans only thing, and I'm here because I heard you were a really big fan. I want to make sure you're there. Oh, I have to talk to Liz about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great, oh, well, look at that. But I actually already, I already talked to her, and she says, You can go. Then, yeah. Yeah. She is there. She is there. All right, I got a seat for me. I want to see you a little bit later about that. Remind them who I am. It's Stephen Curry. Is <laughs> it uh, basketball? All right, ready? <laughs> I don't lose that. Bro, I don't Alright, man. Hey, it was so great to meet you, my friend. Oh my, oh my gosh. No, let me in. Oh, have a seat for me. Have a seat. Oh my gosh. Come here. Selena. So, your favorite thing about me is your face. And if you could ask me anything, what do you want to know? Your number. <laughs> How about we grab lunch tomorrow? I gotta ask Elizabeth. <laughs> Same thing, such good well. Again, I got I got the clearance from Liz and we're good if we can grab lunch. Is that cool? I'm broke. <laughs> Alright. It's on me, but where should we go? Uh, Chuck E. Cheese. Chuck E. Cheese, a date to Chuck E. Cheese it is then. Sound good? Alright, my friend. Hey. <laughs> Great to meet you. I will see you tomorrow, little hey. bit. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, how are you? Remind everybody who I am. You're Billy Eilish. Been a fan for a long time. Your favorite thing about me is. You're just so perfect in every way. No. If you could ask me anything, what would you like to know? Or if I can talk about your concert. That's actually what I came here for. I wanted to ask if you could be in my next one, front row, VIP, all expenses. All right, well, are you there? Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding. This way. Oh my goodness. Hey, I can't wait. Hey, come here. So great to meet you. Oh my goodness. I will see you a little bit later. Hi, how are you? Oh my god, I'm so good. <laughs> Remind everybody who I am. You're Sean Mendes. <laughs> You've been a fan for a long time? Yeah. You could ask me anything. What do you want to know? Were you like, were you taking me on a date? <laughs> you know, ask and you shall receive. Let's do it. No way. Yes way. Where should we go? Let's go to the movies. All right, let's do it. Yes. I'll pick you up at uh, 11 after the show. Okay, let's go. All right, hey, so great to meet you. Oh my God. <laughs> I will see you a little bit later then. How are you? <laughs> How are you? Doing great. Remind them who I am. Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Been a fan for a long time. Aww, uh, here. Stand up for me. Now, if you could ask me anything, what do you want to know? Do you like my dad or something? You're <laughs> <laughs> No? Sure. 
<laughs> I know you have a dad already, but what if I just uh, how about, let's say, a god dad, a godfather, a godfather, all right, cool, all right, so, uh, and how about I actually give you uh, some Iron Man lessons to learn how you could be Iron Man. <laughs> Oh my gosh, hey, it was so great to meet you. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Here, have a seat for me. Have a seat. So good. All right. Are you still here? Hi, still here. All right. Now, I know I got. I actually have to get running to a press interview. Oh, but hey, before... Give me tickets before you go, bro. <laughs> All right. I will give you... These are your tickets. Don't lose your tickets. Yeah, I all right, hold on. I'll make sure you get the get the tickets. Is it two tickets? Yeah, two tickets right there. All right, everybody sit down. Make sure you keep that safe. Don't lose that. Everybody right here, I have to get going. Before I do, I want to give you a quick high five as a thank you for getting to meet you. And when I do, you'll go right to sleep. First time touching now. Feeling great. Feeling amazing. Doing good. Everybody relaxing even deeper in every way. Next time you open your eyes, next time you open your eyes, I am no longer your favorite celebrity. No longer your favorite celebrity, back to being normal. However, the next time that you open your eyes, actually, we're gonna do something a little bit different. Everybody, one, two, three, awake. Sitting up doing great, all right. You all right, all right. You all right, my friend, doing good? You good? You signed your ball, oh, don't lose that. Are you doing good? I got tickets. <laughs> oh, you got tickets, all right. Everyone doing good, having fun with the show? Yeah, all right. Now, all right, in addition, so hypnosis is a lot of fun. We can create some really fun, cool experiences by shifting the mind, the way the mind thinks about a certain idea. And through the subconscious, when the mind thinks and has a different idea, it instantly creates that new experience. But in addition to being able to use it for fun and create these fun, hilarious, entertaining experiences, we can also create it to use, use it to create an, real, impactful changes. Now, how many of you are not a fan of public speaking? Anybody not really a fan of public speaking? Um, not really. Here, come here. And uh, how do you feel about public speaking? I don't like it. So if I asked you right now to give a speech in front of all of these people, how would you feel about doing that? I'd vomit. <laughs> all right, well, I'm, I'm going to hand you the mic and you're going to do just that. You're not going to vomit. Don't worry, you will not vomit. But I'm going to hand you the mic and you're going to just give them like a quick 30 second motivational speech which you got for them. Sound good? Okay. Here you go. Hello everyone. What's my, up? My name is Jensen. I'm the Senator of Life Sciences. <laughs> I am a RISC, everyone who is a bio major, chemistry, environmental studies, physics, nursing, and exercise science. Yeah. Thank you. Give it up, boys. Give it up. So the thing is, we are going to do this one more time. We're going to do, do it again. This time, I want you to do Stand your feet, close your eyes, focus on the sound of my voice. Next time that you open your eyes, you are the best motivational speaker in the entire world, and you have no fear or reservations about public speaking whatsoever. In fact, you love public speaking because you are amazing at it, and you are the absolute best at motivating and inspiring people here. And you're going to give, again, a quick 30-second speech to motivate the crowd, but you are amazing at public speaking. Absolutely love it because you are the best at it. One, two, three, awake. Doing great. All right, how do you feel about public speaking? Hello, everyone. <laughs> so if I asked you to give a quick speech to them, would you mind? Yeah, give it, give it. Hi, everyone. My name is Jackson Nicole, Senator of Life Sciences here for ASNU, which stands for Associated Students of St. Martin's University. And what that basically means is I oversee everyone who is a bio major, chemistry major, physics major, math major, maybe, environmental science, <laughs> not environmental science, exercise science, and nursing. If you have a complaint, come to me, and I can connect you with other senators if you aren't under and or not my constituent. Thank you so much for your guys' time. Doing great. And now I do that as a, a quick demonstrational example of how we can use hypnosis to literally change our life. Because we can create these fun, entertaining experiences all day long. But what if you could use hypnosis to help you overcome a fear like public speaking, or help you to become more confident, 
to feel less stressed, less nervous, even break through depression, anxiety, addictions, fears, phobias, literally like that. Your mind is that powerful enough to create that type of change. Now, everybody's doing great folks right here for me, and we will do a little bit after the show. At the end of the show, I'm going to stick around for a couple extra minutes to do some extra transformational hypnosis to teach you guys how you can use hypnosis in your personal lives and to create that change. So, don't go anywhere at the end of the show if you want to learn more about how we can use hypnosis in that real way. Everybody right here. Actually, what we'll do is we are going to play a game of hypnosis hot potato. I have my invisible hypnosis hot potato, and when I will pass it to you, just like hot potato, you'll just pass it to the person next to you. But the moment you let go, you'll go right back to sleep. Always staying in your seat, staying safe in your seat, but the moment you pass it to the person next to you, you go right to sleep. Ready? every muscle in their fiber. The next time that you open your eyes, next time you open your eyes, anytime that I make the sound, I immediately become the most attractive person you have ever seen in your entire life. Whether male or female, does not matter. Whoever you are, I immediately become extraordinarily attractive. However, anytime I make this sound, anytime I make that sound, I immediately become the most unattractive person you have ever seen the ugliest, most repulsive, just not interested at all, even more unattractive any time I make that sound. But any time I make that first sound, the most attractive you've ever seen. Doing absolutely amazing, couldn't let yourself one, two, three a week, sitting up straight and tall, doing awesome on it. Now, guys doing good, having fun at the show. And now, one of the things I uh, didn't mention <laughs> is, uh, Hypnosis can be a really... How are you doing? How are you doing? Doing good? Aw, oh, thank you. You look good too. So, so I was, uh... <laughs> we were saying that we should, uh... <laughs> What's your question? <laughs> you said you had a question? How to count shoulders? How many, how many shoulders? One, two, three, four. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you said you were talking to... Are you doing good? Alright. Let's do it! All right, well, uh, no? All right, have a seat for me. All right, I have returned back to normal. You guys doing, doing good? Doing good? All right, having fun in the show. Now, here is what we'll do. Can you stand up for me? Have you ever done any hypnosis? Have you ever hypnotized anybody before? No. You want to learn? Sure. Put your right hand up. Right finger up. Index finger. This finger now has the power to hypnotize people sitting up here on stage. Anybody in touch on the forehead with that finger who's sitting in a chair up here will go right to sleep. Yeah. Test it out. Watch. <laughs> Pretty cool. All right. Look at that. Instant hypnotist. Here, try on somebody else. Magic I mean, it's attached to you, isn't it? Here, does it work on anybody else? <laughs> Alright, here, have a seat, have a seat. Does everybody want this power? Alright, have a seat. If you want this power, if you want the power, sit down. In fact, finger ready? Your finger has the power, but try and look at that finger. 
your finger has the power. But in a moment, that finger is going to become magnetized to your forehead and it'll put you right back to sleep now. <laughs> Relaxing even deeper all the way down. Next time you open your eyes, I am no longer attractive or unattractive regardless of what noises I make. However, the next time you open your eyes, you are all superheroes. But not just any superhero. The world has enough, you know, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Captain America, all the superheroes we know and love, but you are a brand new superhero that nobody has heard of with a unique set of skills, powers, and abilities like nobody else. You are a brand new superhero next time you open your eyes. One, two, three, awake. Sitting up straight and tall, doing great, doing awesome. All right, everybody stand up for me. I hear you all have a very special set of skills, and I know part of what you do, posture, is very important. I, on the count of three, I simply want you to make your superhero pose. One, two, three. Your superhero pose. Now, I have to know, your superhero name is... The person I'm touching, your superhero name? He doesn't have one. What is your superhero name? Squiggly Bob. A little bit louder? Squiggly Bob. And your superpower is? My ball gets squiggly. Your bones are squiggly. And how did you discover you? How did you discover you had this power? And so, if... Squiggly Bones. If somebody comes to take down the school, what would you do to stop them? Everyone's on their own. <laughs> Everyone's on their own. Sorry, Squiggly Bones ain't saving the day. Uh, your superhero name is? Medic Man. And Medic Man, your superhero power? I have the power to heal all health disparities in the nation. That is an amazing superpower. Wow. And do you have a superhero theme song? Yes. What is your superhero theme song? It all starts with UCLA. That's <laughs> my song. All right. Uh, give it up for Medic Man. Oh, my goodness. Your superhero name is? The Runner Man. And your superpower? I can make anyone run as fast as he can. Oh, wow. And how did you learn you had this power? Uh, I was born with it. He was born with it. Your superhero name? A uh, weatherman. <laughs> and the weatherman, your superpower? I can control the weather. Control the weather. So if a, an evil professor decides to take over the school, Snow what do you do? Snow day! Just like that! Oh! All right! Great idea. And your superhero is? Danger Dan. And Danger Dan, your superpower? I can walk on water. Walk on water. How did you learn you had that ability? So I was like running really fast one day, even though I don't run, and then like I came upon a lake, and I ran on it, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I, I literally dodged stars. Wow. Do you have a theme song? No. No, no theme song. That's a pretty cool ability. And your superhero name? The cleaner. The cleaner, your ability? I, I clean. <laughs> and so if a super villain wants to take over the world, what are you going to do to stop him? Clean out of his evilness. Clean him of his evilness. Very smart. And your superhero name? Steel. And steel. Your superpower? I made a steel. And I just sort of out of my forearms. Whoa. And do you have a superhero theme song? Black Sabbath. Anything Black Sabbath is the theme song. Give it up for all of these amazing superheroes. Oh my goodness. Have a seat for me. Have a seat. <laughs> Doing good? I tell you, every show is a different show, my friend. All right. All right, everybody's doing, everybody doing great right here, staying in your seat, staying safe, sleep. All the way down, that's right. Next time you open your eyes. Oh, I was like, I was looking at two different clocks here. I was like, no, it can't be that. Alright, but that's alright. But next time you open your eyes, 
We are actually getting ready to wrap up and finish up the show. Next time you open your eyes, feeling absolutely amazing and incredible in every single way. But the next time you open your eyes, you completely forget the entire show. It is as if nothing ever happened. You do not remember anything you did, saw, or heard here on stage. However, when you hear me say the word good night, when you hear me say the word good night, immediately from wherever you are sitting or standing, you immediately stand up and start counting down as loudly as you can from 10 down to one, every number louder than the rest, like you're counting down a rocket launch. And the moment that you say the number one, the moment the number one leaves your lips, then you remember everything. The memories all come back, everything you did, saw, heard, and experienced up here on stage tonight. All good, wonderful, positive memories of everything in the show. But you completely forget, it's as if no show took place, no memory of the show. Until I say that special word, then you stand up and count down from 10 to 1 as loud as you can, and you remember everything the moment the number one leaves your lips. And I'm going to count up from 1 to 5 right now. Every number I count up from 1 to 5, feeling less relaxed and more energetic and feeling amazing. Starting with number 1, gather up all the wonderful positive energy in your body, feeling absolutely incredible in every way. 2, beginning to sit up in your chair now, feeling great, full of energy, full of life, into number 3. So much confidence and assurance flowing through every bit of your body now into number 4. So fantastic and amazing. You feel the best that you have felt all day, all week, all year, in fact. Feeling absolutely incredible and amazing in every way. Getting ready now to release yourself from this hypnotic state and opening your eyes now at the final number five. Doing great. All right. <laughs> Everyone feeling good? Feeling great now. Thank you all for being part of such an awesome show. I hope you all had, had fun. Uh, what was that? You were just part of a show, and it was a lot. What was your favorite part of the show? The show already happened. I'm late. <laughs> what was your favorite part? <laughs> your, your favorite part of the show? <laughs> Wait, where are you going? What was your? Did you like the show? Did you? Yeah, we had a show. All right. I shouldn't have been late. I walked over with them. I thought. How many of you were hypnotized? Oh, Liz said you couldn't be at the time? Oh, sorry, Liz. All right, here's, here's the deal. If you were not hypnotized, I guess head back to your seat and we'll get some new people up here. I'm sorry. I missed the whole thing. Oh, I'm so sorry. If it didn't work, we'll get some different people up here. I know, you feel bad. Um, so here's the deal. Again, you all know there's one final moment coming. If you have your phone, this is a great moment to capture at the end of the show. Pull out your phone if you have it on you. And what I want you to do is pull up Instagram. If you have Instagram, pull up Instagram. This is a really fun moment to capture on an Instagram story or even a feed. And I want to give you... Shh, let me give you my Instagram so that you can, one, follow me so you can see the videos from the shows later, and two, so you can tag me in any post that you make. It is just my name, Zach Pinsons. Z-A-C-H-P-I-N, you put in Zach Pin, you will see me come up on Instagram. Hypnotist Zach Pinson. Zach Pin, Z-A-C-H-P-I-N, on Instagram, you'll see Zach Pinson, you'll see me. So, that being said, guys, listen, the show's almost over. That being said, this is the end of the official hypnosis show, or it will about to be. However, like I mentioned, like I mentioned, I will stick around for an extra maybe 15, 20 minutes and do an additional show. I will do a second, shh, guys, listen, shh, listen, we're almost done, we're almost there. I'm going to do a second show that is more of the transformational hypnosis. So to teach and show you how you can use hypnosis to be more confident, less stressed, and achieve transformation in your life. So that's an optional thing. If you want to leave and go home, that's totally fine. But I will stick around for anybody that wants to do the second show and learn how they can change their life with this tool. Again, Zach Pinsons on Instagram, Z-A-C-H-P-I-N. Tag me in the post. I'd love to see them. Thank you all for wait, wait, coming wait, wait, wait. out. When's the second show? <laughs> when did the first show happen? <laughs> the second show will start in five minutes after this one ends. And this one is about to end. Thank you all so much for coming out. You all have been amazing. Thank you, and I hope you have a good night. Watch their faces!
would like to stick around for the second component of the show. A little bit extra, totally optional, but this is my favorite application of hypnosis. I love using hypnosis in this different way to teach people how they can genuinely change their life. And if you think this is cool, wait till you start using it to actually create a positive change. Now, I can't stick around for too much longer. I actually am taking a 12.45 flight out of here. I'm doing a show in Pennsylvania tomorrow. So I'm literally on a red-eye flight. So in about 20 minutes, I like have to beeline out and go and catch my flight and make sure have fun sleeping on a plane tonight. It's part of the show biz, right? It's just fun and great, but that's the behind the scenes. So usually I like to stick around and do some stuff afterwards. I ended my show a little bit earlier than I do to make sure that we could still do this because I love teaching people how they can use their mind with hypnosis to not only create these fun experiences, but to actually change their life. And so the way this is gonna work for the second show is there's not gonna be any volunteers. I'm not bringing people up on stage, but it's more an interaction with you guys in the audience. And I like to do what I call hypnotic interventions. And what that means is I'll you know, take a volunteer from somebody in the audience and ask them a question of how they could use this tool to create a breakthrough in their life. And through having that conversation with them, you all can get the tools and learn how you could use and create that same breakthrough in your own life. Now, conversational hypnosis is the type of hypnosis I'm gonna do here right now. That means there's no trance, there's no putting people to sleep, no eyes closed, nothing like that. But it's simply using people to learn how they can use their mind in a different way to create that belief. Because at the end of the day, when you wanna change your life, know this, this one idea will help you change anything in your life. How many of you want one idea to change anything in your life? And the fact is, the truth when it comes to creating change in your life is this one thing. You know this one thing and you'll get it. It is that all change is a matter of motivation rather than ability. If you have enough motivation to create a change you want, you will create it. If I told you I would give you $1 million if you got a 4.0 this semester, how many of you think you could get a 4.0 this semester? Every, every, just about every hand goes up. Not gonna lie. Maybe if I up the ante, a little more motivation, you figure out a way to get there. But you see what I'm saying, is that if the motivation is there, you can create the ability. If you had enough determination, I don't care if I got a two GPA last month, this month I'm getting the four. You make a way to create it. Because that's the way that our mind works. When it has enough leverage, enough motivation to create an idea, it will create that experience. You know, there's an old expression Henry Ford once said, whether you think you can or you can't do something, either way you are correct, you are right. And when your mind leverages itself on enough motivation, as you saw up here on stage, their motivation because they're in their subconscious was like that. Given my idea, their motivation shifts to say this idea is true and then it is true instantaneously. And if you were to be able to tap into your mind to understand how literally changing the leverage in your mind could create instant change. Now, change happens in a moment. Change happens in an instant. Anybody that tells you it took them 10 years of their life to change, really it took them 10 years to get to the point where they decided to change. Change happens in an instant, but transformation happens over time. If someone wants to see me for quitting smoking, I can use hypnosis to help them quit smoking like that, create that change. If someone wants to see me to quit losing weight, I'm not just gonna snap and 50 pounds falls off. But what I do is create the change by creating the leverage, by creating the motivation internally to say, this change must happen and it must happen now, and this change will happen and it will happen now, and you ignite and you start the transformation. When that transformation begins, then it's the journey, and slowly, the weeks at a time, the pounds fall off until a couple months later, they're down 50 pounds, because it would be unhealthy to lose 50 pounds. Now, if I said I'd give you a million dollars, or a hundred million dollars, if you could lose 50 pounds right now, you could cut off a limb to make that happen, right? Now, that's a change that's possible, it's possible, but just because that change is attainable doesn't mean it's sustainable, right? We wanna make sure that we create change that we can actually sustain in our day-to-day -day life. But we know even if it came down to it, it's still attainable, just not in a healthy way. But knowing that any change we wanna make, whether it's to be more confident, more motivated, less stressed, break through our depression or anxiety or fears or limiting beliefs, it is attainable. We wanna do it in a way that's sustainable in our long-term life, right? Because if I give people suggestions on a stage and it's fun, but what if they have that this isn't here? Then nobody's giving me suggestions and I can't change my life. But if I teach you how to tap into that part of your brain, where then you have the ability, you have the skills, because the truth is that all of our minds are wired and designed 
in this way. Most of us just don't know how to use them. But if you learn to use that tool and tap into that power and ability, then you don't need me, you don't need a hypnotist, you don't need suggestions. You become the hypnotist of your own life and you create the change. Now, what I'd like to do at this point, as I mentioned, I do what's called hypnotic intervention, which means I will ask somebody from the audience to stand up and they will be a, a volunteer and to give me an example of a problem they would like to break through in their life. So I have a second microphone here. So I know a lot of times for college audiences it can tend to be wanting to be more confident, less stressed, more motivated, break through depression, anxiety, or whatever it is. So is there somebody here that wants to volunteer as a problem? You're sitting in the front. So as someone sitting in the front, you get to be the person. Stand up for me. And Everybody, your name? My name is Jill. Give it up for Jill. Woo! No, you didn't hear me. I said, this is Jill, everybody. Woo! All right, all right. And Jill, what is the challenge you're looking to break through? Uh, I want to stop being anxious. Stop being anxious. How many of you could use a little less anxiety in your life right now? All right. So it's not just Jill, is it? Right? It's something that we all experience every day. And Jill, what does that anxiety look like for you in your life? Um, I don't know what it looks like, but I know what it feels like. Okay, what does it feel like? It feels like something is squeezing my heart. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and when something is squeezing your heart, what does that mean? It probably means not breathing. Okay. Yeah. But what does it mean emotionally? Emotionally? I don't know how to explain that. Okay. Yeah. And so, when you feel anxious, mm -hmm. what does that hold you back, stop you from doing? From doing, um, like, things that I need to do. If I'm trying to do something and there's anxiety starts coming, I cannot do it. Yeah, how many of you can relate to that? Anxiety holds you back from being the person that you want to be, from doing the things you want to do. Now, how long have you experienced anxiety? Four years. Four years. So there was a time in your life where you used to not experience that level of anxiety. Yeah. Okay. And what was it like when that anxiety wasn't there? Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> it was great? Yeah. Yeah, were you able to do the things without that holding you back? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was able to, like, you know, join sports, and I was able to join clubs, and um, just, like, speak in front of the audience, things like that. Okay. And now, what might happen if you started acting the same way you did four years ago when that anxiety wasn't there? I think I'd be doing a lot more things. You'd be doing a lot more <laughs> things, right? And even though the anxiety might still be there, if you acted like it wasn't, how might that create a change? Could you repeat the question? So even, sorry, even though the anxiety still might be there consciously, if you were to suddenly just act like it wasn't there, how might that be different? Um, still, like, do more things, but, like, also, like, smile a little bit more, and, like, physically, I think physically I'd feel a lot better. Physically you'd feel a lot better. Now, she raises a great point because physiology is a huge part of creating change in our life. I want you to stand in a way that makes you feel really powerful. There you go. How, how, a little silly, but how anxious do you feel when you're standing in a really powerful way? Not at all. Not at all. I want you to stand in a way that makes you feel really defeated, really nervous, really shy. Yeah, how anxious do you feel when you're standing like that? Very anxious. Very anxious. So you're telling me that simply just by changing the way that you stand right now, you can change the level of anxiety you're experiencing? Yeah. Yeah? I want all of you to try this right now. Where you're sitting, sit in a way that makes you feel really powerful. Really powerful. You can even do this standing up too. Yeah, back to that place. All right, and notice the difference. Notice the change. Now, where'd that anxiety go? Somewhere. Somewhere, but not in you, right? <laughs> like that. You change your physiology, you change your experience. Go back to that defeated place. Everybody go down to a place that makes you feel nervous, makes you feel shy, makes you feel anxious, and notice that that feeling comes back simply just because of the fact that you are moving your body differently than the way you are now. Go back to that powerful place, back to that powerful place, that's right, right back up to that place, and notice that anxiety goes right down. Notice that it goes somewhere else, right? It goes away, because when we change our physiology, it changes how we experience our emotions. Second thing that you can do to change how much you experience anxiety in your life is change what you focus on. What are you focusing on when you feel really anxious? Kind of control over things, I think. Like, I like to be in charge, yeah. and I like to make sure everything is perfect. And the more you feel like you need to be in control, the more you realize the less you have control, right? Yes. Yeah. And the less you have control, the more anxious you become, <coughs> right? For sure. When you're not anxious, what are you focusing on? Mm, that's a good question. Probably sleeping. <laughs> Probably sleeping. <laughs> sleeping. 
<laughs> right? So what, what's a positive outcome that you focus on when you're not anxious? Like, what am I doing with my mind? What's your mind doing when you're the opposite of anxious? Mm, probably listening to music, like, or just like kind of creating music in my head. Okay, but it's creating a more positive thing than mm -hmm. control. Yeah. Right? But by changing what we focus on, we change, again, how our body and our mind experiences the emotion. Because the difference between anxiety and excitement, between fear and nervousness and excitement and anticipation, is what we focus on. Because physiologically, they're the exact same thing. If I get nervous, right, you get butterflies in your stomach, your palms start getting sweaty, your breathing increases, and if you get excited, you get butterflies in your stomach, your palms get sweaty, your breathing increases. But the difference is simply what you focus on. Because when you're nervous, what are you focusing on? Getting control. Getting control. But when you're excited, you focus on? Just having fun. Just having fun. Because it's the difference in what we focus on. Because all anxiety is rooted in fear. But all excitement is rooted in faith. It's rooted in the positive outcome. When we focus on the positive outcome, we're more likely to get it. When we focus on the negative, you're more likely to get that. Because our brain tends to find what it looks for. If it looks for reasons to feel nervous and anxious, it could find them. If it looks for reasons to feel excited and hopeful, it will find them as well. So by changing your focus, you change how you experience anxiety. The last thing, I'll leave you with the third and final thing, and then we will wrap up and get going, because I do have a plan again. The third thing, we change our physiology, we change our focus. The third thing is we change our language, we change our words, the words that we use, because words are highly hypnotic. And the words that we use create the emotions we experience. Now, what if instead of being anxious, what if you were peeved? What? If you're peeved, or maybe a little irked, or a little troublesome, okay. right? There we go, one of them makes sense. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying, right? Those other two words, she's like, what? You're right? talking to an engineer. I don't uh, know. No, that's all right. <laughs> but if we use a different word to describe it, even like, what? What does even irk to me? And that's so silly, yeah. right? But even if I said, all right, what if instead of anxiety, you had irksiety? <laughs> you get that response. It's so ridiculous. Your brain can't even keep a straight face while thinking of irksiety, right? Still. But when our mind gets hooked on that word, it creates the experience related to that word. See, irksiety creates a silly, funny reaction because it's the power of words. Words produce emotions. So if we constantly use words like anxious and stressed and nervous, again, our brain finds what it looks for. And it creates those emotions based off of the words that we use. So instead, if we use more empowering words, instead of anxiety, maybe I'm hopeful. Maybe I'm excited. Maybe I have a sense of anticipation. Because for me, people will sometimes ask, well, do you ever get nervous getting up on stage? Do you ever get nervous performing in front of large crowds, in front of a lot of people? No, I never get nervous. Because I always get excited. I get excited because of the positive outcome I know is going to happen. And people say, well, what if you fail? What if it doesn't go well? To me, in my mind, the way that I've shifted the words and the meaning behind failure is I don't fail. Because I never fail if I learn something. If this show went horribly wrong, nobody got hypnotized and it was just a mess and it was a disaster, it's not a failure in my mind. Because it went wrong, so I asked myself, why did it go wrong and how can I make it not go wrong next time? I learned something from it. If it went right every time, I'd never grow, I'd never get better. But the failures actually become the best lessons. Experience is the best teacher. So if the worst case possibility is that you fail and you learn something and you grow and become better, it's not very bad of an outcome. And if that's the worst case, if best case, it goes well and it goes amazing and it goes awesome, you help people, you inspire people, you do your best, you have fun, then it's great. But simply just by changing the words that you use, you change your experience. Now, recap. What is the first thing that we change? We change our physiology. physiology. We change our body. The second thing is we change our focus. What we focus on, the meaning we attach. And the third thing is we change our words, our language, the things we use to describe our experiences. If you go in your everyday life and you start changing your physiology, you change your focus, and you change your language, that will create a drastic experience on how you experience anxiety, but you'll also notice it can create a difference in how you experience depression or confidence or motivation or whatever change you want to experience. You can hypnotize yourself by simply changing how your mind experiences those emotions by changing those three things. And you'll notice. 
I like, literally DM me on Instagram a week later and be like, hey, by changing this, my focus physiology and language, I actually had a better week, or I did better in my grades, or I was more motivated, or I was less anxious. And if nothing happened, also DM me and tell me, no, that was bogus and it didn't work at all, right? And I would be like, all right, I failed, but I learned something. How do I do it better the next time? So either way, I'd still love to hear from you, so let me know. But at the end of the day, remember that all of our expectations are self-fulfilling prophecies. So if you tell yourself that you can do something, you're right. If you tell yourself you can't and it won't work, you're also correct. But know this, that whatever your minds can believe and conceive, they can achieve. So with that, thank you guys for sticking around. I have to catch my flight out of here. Thank you guys for being amazing. Let's give it up one more time for Joe. Thank you, Joe. All right. Have a fantastic night and fantastic semester, fans.